Hey everyone, this is Dan Bell, and this is my nighttime tour of the Owings Mills Mall in Owings Mills, Maryland. A mall that is currently so dead that you cannot believe that they leave the doors unlocked. We're going to go in and have a look around. of the Owings Mills Fashion Mall does not only mean a new high fashion place to shop, it also means lots of new developments and jobs. It's the cornerstone of one of the biggest building booms on the East Coast. The Owings Mills Mall opens this week as the core of a new town center. The mall has 155 shops, including several eateries. As you dine in the conservatory, you are surrounded by topiary plants. But the first thing to hit your eye probably will be the marble floor, imported from France. So here we are going on a nighttime visit to the Owings Mills Mall, which I cannot believe that the doors are still unlocked and the mall is actually still open. This mall has fallen so far down, I, I don't even know what to say, really. It's, uh, it's a shocking sight. My first dead mall series video was shot at this mall and that was back in the spring of this year so it wasn't that long ago less than a year ago and at the time that i was here there were still uh places in this food court there was actually two places in the food court that were still open they had all the tables um, all these fountains that you see were in operation and you could come in, get a bite to eat, sit down, relax, whatever. Now all of the, the, the rest of the, the two little eateries are now closed. So they have removed all of the tables and all of the chairs where you could sit and now there's just a few benches. Now, in keeping with the elite kind of theme that this mall once conveyed out to the public, they didn't call this a food court, they called it the conservatory. Um, so, don't ever say food court at Owings Mills, this is the conservatory. Now they're conserving energy, because there's no cookers, there's no fryers, there's nothing <laughs> that is doing anything. So there's a lot of uh, energy is being conserved by this conservatory not even being open anymore. This mall is one of the most beautiful dead malls I've been to. It's still clean. It smells decent. Um, it's just sparkling. It, it just looks so nice. It's a beautiful, beautiful mall. But let's get down to the nitty gritty. The stores that are left, Bath and Body Works, uh, Gymboree, and Gymboree has just announced that they are closing. So they will be closed a few days after the production of this video. So this will be uploaded on the 19th, excuse me, the 18th. They'll be closed on the 20th. Victoria's Secret, Downtown Locker Room, or DTLR as they are referred to. Macy's, JCPenney. Macy's is also closing. So once Macy's and Jim Bree closes, you will only have Victoria's Secret, Bath and Body Works, Downtown Locker Room, and JCPenney. Now what I think is going to happen is I think that 
the three stores, Victoria's Secret, Downtown Locker Room, and Bath and Body Works, I think they're going to close. I think JCPenney's going to stay open, and they're going to seal them all off, and it'll just be abandoned. What got me interested in returning to this mall was that I saw a video on YouTube that someone posted as they walked through the mall at night. And when I saw the video, because I had only been here in the daytime, I was like, oh my gosh, that is so creepy. And when I went back to this mall at night, I just went recently with my friend Tyler. Um... It was like the creepiest thing I've ever seen. And the weird thing was, so they just had, um, it had just rained and I'm not, I'm not kidding. Look, wait, look at this shot here. Look at this. All that. It just goes the halls go on forever and ever. And there's no people forever and ever and ever. There's no people. It's incredible. Anyway, what was I saying? So, oh, yeah, it had just rained. They, there must have been, I would say, two or three hundred buckets on the floor catching dripping water. And I'm not exaggerating when I say two or three hundred. There could have been more. Uh, it was a whole operation to get these buckets out so the floors wouldn't be covered in puddles. Unbelievable. I have never seen anything like that before. To give you an example, I grew up actually in the Rockville area, and I remember back in the mid-80s when this mall opened, and word had even traveled there that this was something else, and it's just really uh, sad to see what this mall has become, mostly uh, a lot of blight. But as we said, that's all about to change. Kevin Kamenetz making an announcement earlier today that the mall is going to undergo a major reconstruction, changing it from an indoor mall to mostly an outdoor mall. To the people of Owings Mills, congratulations because it's going to be happening now. A recent county study showed that more than 500,000 people with household incomes over $80,000 live within 10 miles of the mall. Kimco and General Growth felt that this was proof that they needed to do the project, funding the whole thing, about $70 million. We're going to create a catalyst for growth in the community. And this will really be the foundation to create a new retail, dining, and entertainment hub for all of Northwest Baltimore County. beautiful fountain that we're looking at here. I want to get into a little bit of the history of the downfall of Owings Mills Mall. You look at these images and you think, how could a mall this beautiful, how could this happen to this mall? And the beginning of the end of this mall happened in 1992. What occurred was there used to be a footbridge that went from the mall to a metro station, which is still which is still up there in Owings Mills. And the metro runs from Owings Mills to downtown Baltimore. A lady who worked at Saks Fifth Avenue as a cleaning woman, uh, she was leaving work one night, 
and she was on that footbridge and she was robbed and she tried to fight the um, perpetrator and he shot her in the back of the head at point blank range killed her Um, the news spread across the region and Owings Mills got the reputation of being a place you did not want to go that it was unsafe and I remember in the 90s as the 90s were on you could see that you would go to the mall and there would be more and more vacancies every time you went so that was really the beginning of the end and here we are in 2015 and there are what five stores left out of there are 155 spaces in this mall this mall is enormous I can't even tell you how big this mall is if you get a chance if you live in Maryland and you like dead malls you have to go to Owings Mills it is unbelievable Here are the two escalators in the mall that they still have running. And these face this, which was Lord and Taylor, which is also closed. And if you get up close to those doors where Lord and Taylor used to be, you can smell mold coming out of the the wind that wafts out of the little cracks. You can smell a moldy smell in there. I'm not quite sure how long... Uh, That Lord and Taylor has been vacant. I I think it's been a pretty good amount of time. And here we are walking down to another abandoned anchor store and a wing with no business except Bath and Body Works. This wing actually used to have another business uh, called African Hair Braiding, which you'll see in a moment. Uh, But here on the right is Bath and Body Works. So you have to walk from from where that is to where JCPenney is. There's a whole just empty corridor that you walk to get to this area. Um, Upstairs from here is actually closed off. So they have closed off the upstairs section of this part of the mall. Here's another empty fountain. And here is the African hair braiding place that was open a few weeks ago and is now closed. The stores in Owings Mills Mall are becoming so sparse, the New York Times recently profiled it as an example of shopping centers poised to close and become dead malls. And Owings Mills is not alone. The Times says more than two dozen malls have closed since 2010, and another 60 are barely staying open. The InFocus team first looked into the mall struggles last year. Despite the empty space in the mall, office, housing and retail spaces are going up in the area near the mall in the Reisterstown Road corridor. You would think with all of this construction that there's a need for more retail space. But numbers tell a different story. Compared to the greater Baltimore area's average retail vacancy rate of 5.2%, 12% of retail space in the Reisterstown Road corridor is empty. That's according to a McKenzie commercial real estate report. The mall's decline is part of an overall trend happening all around the country. So here we are going towards the elevator that takes you back up to the conservatory. Don't call it a food court. It is a conservatory. I want to say thank you to Jordan Lance for putting together the music for this episode. You can find him on YouTube. Seabergman1000. I also want to thank the people at Dead Mall Enthusiasts on Facebook a page that has always promoted my work uh, filming these dead malls and have helped uh, propel this project to where it is today. Anyway, thank you all for watching. We'll be back with another episode soon. Thank you.